As Christians, do you sometimes feel you're always swimming upstream? More than ever before, we're distracted um, and bombarded with things of the world and our culture and things distract us from the important things like the Lord and connecting with him. So today we're actually going to be looking at some life hacks that will help us to go deeper with the Lord. So I want to make sure that you actually understand what a life hack is. I do have a definition up there, a strategy or technique adopted in order to manage one's time and daily activities in a more efficient way. That's off the dictionary. But no, it is definitely not, I'm not going to be teaching you how to hack into bank accounts or social media accounts or email accounts. Does anyone know how to do that here, by the way? Anyone? No. Okay. A life hack isn't a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. And uh, it can make our life better. A life hack is a bit of a trick, a shortcut, and a skill that can increase productivity or efficiency in any area of life. It's also a way of doing something that is new. Maybe it's better than the old way. So to give you some examples, I have prepared some life hacks earlier. Let's go. Let's have a look. Okay, to remove the stem of a strawberries, use a straw. So I've tried that. You just pop a straw through and out pops the stem. Now, some old cars may not have a uh, cup holder. So never fear. Just get your old shoe, put it there. Voila, there is a cup holder. Okay, there, sometimes you've got to buy the expensive cookbook holders, but if you've just got those, uh, the little clippy things that, uh, from the pants, there you are. Libby Smith, that's one, for, that's one for you, you're welcome. Now, this one, Daryl actually told me he used to get his sandwiches nicked at, uh, at work. So, paint the outside of your plastic bag with a bit of green paint Put it, your sandwich in it, so or whatever salad. So if you go to work, you will fool everybody that you've been, and your lunch will be all yours. This is a goodie, um, don't you think? Actually, that does two purposes. You don't have to pick it up off the floor and eat it, right? So just turn your hoodie. You can put all sorts of things in that, actually, couldn't you? you could put chocolates or anything, or uh, Maltesers. Hey. Okay, when all, this is for you young people, when you go out flatting and you have no cups left whatsoever, get, cut a capsicum in half and there you go. You've got a, a nice cup of tea. So there you go. Well, they're fun and interesting. What we really want to explore today are some ways of making our relationship with God a lot stronger. So that's what a hack is. So some some different ways of doing things. And our daily walk with Christ requires more from us than just a quick prayer here and there. As Christians, we should be seeking God in all that we do and working towards a deeper relationship of, of him and his word. So there's no quick fixes either, either, but there are ways of making our hours more meaningful. And by finding a more resourceful way to work on your faith walk, more time can be spent with the Lord in prayer, his word, or just resting in him. And while our spiritual life should never be seen through quick fix goggles, these tips may be a starting point that might just transform ideas of connecting with him and uh, just uh, every day being able to just try something new and connecting with him. So I've got a few few hacks for you. These are in no particular order of being um, uh, important. They're all because they are all important. So the first one is finding your quiet place. Now this may be different for each of us, and I also know having small children it's sometimes very very difficult 
But finding quiet time to rest in God is important. By forcing yourself to find a quiet place to read, to pray or listen to him, it helps us to reset the rest of your life in a positive way. There may be a room in your house that you find quiet, a living room or sometimes even the bathroom if you have small children. It probably requires a lock on the door though. I remember one day I went in there to the bathroom and I think I had the whole family in there including the dog. So I thought, no, I'm going to get a lock on this door. Now that I've, our kids have grown up, I've always wanted my own room in the house. Actually, Judy Gordon, you started this years ago. I used to go to your, your house and see your first room and you said, that's my time, I've, the room I pray. And I've always desired that. And now the kids have moved out. I've got that little um, quiet place with no TV and just a place where I can have my cuppa and enjoy time with God. So find that, find that room if you've got one in the house, wherever that may be. Um, outside a park or somewhere is also a wonderful time and place to be quiet. Um, I like going down the park early in the morning and sometimes you see people from all sorts of faith using parks to connect with, um, with, with uh, their gods, but we can do that as well with our wonderful Lord. Um, because sometimes at home, particularly if you're a busy mum, there's always the distractions of uh, cooking, washing, cleaning and ironing. I mean, guys as well. So sometimes hanging out um, in nature can be wonderful for the soul. There's something special about being outside and just away from everything and communing with the Lord. I know a lot of people are working too in the city, sometimes going to an office if you've got go in there early. Um, some people hang out with the Lord in their office space before um, it all, all the whole work day begins. And uh, sometimes that can be a place of getting away from distractions of the home and, and uh, your day-to-day -day life at home. Another one that seems to be a lot of people are talking about this is a, their quiet place is their car. Um, and I know sometimes it's the only place people are finding to have their quiet place. And uh, it's great to be able to get in a car and turn off all our distractions, turn off the radio or put your phone onto flight mode or silent and have that time hanging out with the Lord in the car. Um, I often have to go down and visit my mother, which is 45 minutes away, and sometimes just turning off everything, I just find that a wonderful time of just being with the Lord, playing worship music or listening to uh, a podcast. It's always a very valuable time, and, and sometimes, you know, we can choose to waste it or choose to use it for the Lord. I do want to mention, too, a quiet place. We're having a uh, women's retreat day here um, on the 12th of October where we will have experience sometimes of being quiet here and also in nature. So I'd encourage all the women to come to that. Um, so it's just taking time out from your daily life and spend time alone with God. As Peter said, we was watching the thing on Bill Gates yesterday and he actually took a time out for what he does and he called it uh, Think Week. And I thought, wow, you know, he actually does retreats for what he does to get away from everything, to think about um, solving problems of the world, but how much uh, better it would be if we actually took that intentional time away to do, uh, to hang out with the Lord and be silent and hear him speak to us. So people often say that life's full of distractions. However, if we're intentional about spending time with God, we can choose. There are choose some things. We can choose some things. Unfortunately, children don't have remote controls. We can't turn them off, but we can turn off a lot of things in our house that distract us. So, you know, take have that discipline. Turn off things and, and just have that time of quiet or things that distract us and so that helps us engage with the Lord and get closer to him. So even though Jesus didn't have the distraction of our electric devices, 
he knew the importance of retreating to a quiet place. And in Mark chapter 1, it said very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. But Jesus was the example that he went off to a quiet place. The next one's visual. Use visual reminders. Um, Whether you're good at technology or choose to use your phone or prefer traditional paper. I actually had, so I've got post-it notes in the shape of little hearts here. Um, It's a helpful way of encouraging us to remember the Lord or remember to do our devotional time. Place post-it notes around your house, your office desk. Set timers. Use reminder feature on your phone to designate time to pray or read the Word of God. The old post-it note is still a wonderful way of reminding us to do life with God. Even computers have post-it notes. I'm sure many of you know that. If a particular verse speaks to me, I love opening my computer and there it is right in front of me in the morning. And uh, one of the girls here said they do post-it notes. Um, uh, She does post-it notes and puts it in her walk-in wardrobe. Those of you that have watched The War Room, um, uh, they, they did that in that movie. But she said it reminds her of things to pray for each day and that's wonderful. Choose a scripture verse that's meaningful to you and and let it remind you of God's particular love for you and attention, uh, the attention um, that he has on your life. Um, Actually, while I was uh, preparing this message, I've uh, asked quite a few of the girls here what they do to connect with God. So I'm pinching a lot of ideas from our wonderful women here at Westside. And one of them said they got a some uh, cards from Kurong and uh, they put it in their wallet. So every time the wallet's open, there's the verse. And actually I gave one to our daughter Eloise the other day and I saw that she'd put it in the back of her phone. So every time she picks up the phone, there's a verse there for her. They can be um, bought at the Kurong, the Christian bookstore. Have them where they're visible. Put them where where you look frequently. Put them on your fridge. Put them in your fridge. Anyone put a note in the fridge? I think that's a good idea near the chocolate. Um, And in your car to remind you of God's love for you. Because God's word can transform our day and can stop that countercultural bombardment we get from negative things I mean I don't know about you every time you turn on the news at the moment it's just fear fear more fear more fear so what do we do we can we can combat that by having scripture around no I'm not going to feel like that no I, I can change my thoughts because this is what God thinks of me this is how God views me in the future as well And Romans chapter 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The next one is associating prayer with a regular activity. Now, this one I find is very helpful. but I find this one really helpful in my life too because sometimes we just get distracted, don't we? We all get distracted, but by praying while you're doing a regular activity, can be just a, uh, just a jolt our memory to do things. Um, so again, I asked some of the, the women here at church and Jenny actually said uh, whenever she goes and gets a glass of water, it reminds her that the Lord is there to pray because it refreshes your soul and we need water for our survival as we do the Lord. So I'm going to be um, using that one in the future just to remind us to have a glass of water. Peter and I do our devotional times and pray together when we have our morning coffee. So that's always a cue. Here comes the coffee. He makes it. and But it's our cue. Right. We stop what, it, what we're doing. We're going to be intentional about spending time together with the Lord and praying together. Coffee's a good one. If you're a coffee drinker or a tea drinker or whatever, um, it's great. 
while waiting at the stoplight. At uh, sometimes, I know a lot of people get impatient at stoplights. Stop. Use the time to pray. Pray for the person maybe in the car, the person going in um, passing. Well, not always passing you at the stoplight, but the person behind you. That would be dangerous. Okay, yeah, just pray for people around you at that time. When you are ironing those people that, that iron, not looking at anyone in particular, some people are iron here. Well, if you do iron, I'm a bit slack these days, but I know when I used to iron the kids' school uniforms, um, particularly at the beginning of the week, I would pray for each of my children every time I ironed. If you're an ironing lady like Ros and Helen still does it, pray for those people. You'd be exhausted by the end of the day, wouldn't you? But, I mean, you bless their clothes and pray for them. Just a little uh, little something and pray for your children or whoever you're um, uh, ironing for for the week. It's always good. And when you drive past a school and you have to slow down in the 40 zone, I know this is a scripture union thing, uh, pray for the chaplain at the school. Pray for the staff at the school. Pray for the students at the school. Um, how many people get impatient at the 40 zone and people behind you? But stop. Use that little, little uh, few, uh, probably a minute or two by the time you get through. Just send up a little prayer for the chaplain. And when you walk around the neighbourhood, if you know particular people in the neighbourhood, pray for them as you walk past. I know, Jenny, you do that. And, uh, and if you see somebody when you're driving past, pray for them. Um, I just put in another one about vacuuming because life sucks for many people. <laughs> but pray for those that you know that are going through a really hard time. Pray for those that need healing for relationship issues um, and... Uh, you know, that way you're praying for a purpose that can change instead of I've got to vacuum to radio. Lord, I'm spending this time with you and connecting um, with him about things we need to pray for. Let um, In Psalm 85 says, Lord, let righteousness go before me. Prepare the way ahead. And the next one is uh, inspirational scripture insight. Like I said before, we've got to really uh, keep scripture in front of us. So if you're a smartphone user, most people here have got a smartphone. I know some in the back row there may not understand this sort of what we're talk, going to talk about. But if you've got your smartphone, Consider making your lock screen or home screen image a scripture verse to encourage your faith. There are many wonderful ways of getting scripture these days. I think it's a, the most exciting time in history of being able to get scripture. And uh, you can get apps. Do you all know what an app is? Gay, do you know what an app is? <laughs> I think Gay doesn't reach. You're probably maybe the only one of the few ones that have don't have computers here, but everyone knows the, what an app is, and uh, there's just so many wonderful ways we can get scripture delivered to our phone in the morning. Waking up, there it is. Uh, Sonia said that she likes getting the 96.5 uh, e emails with scripture. I didn't even know they did that. I know there were other ones, but there you go. And there are a number of wonderful resources to encourage our faith more than ever before. And every time you receive a notification, pick up the phone or play uh, a game or text a friend or whatever, the scripture will be there to remind you of God's promises on your life. If you want something a little more permanent, consider small frames and pop them around the house um, they're they're uh, a real, always a great way of reminding you of what God's love for you. Put them in the bathroom, put them in the kitchen, hang them up on walls. I always appreciate, I've got one that my uh, great grandfather did in calligraphy and I've got that hanging on the wall. I thought what a wonderful thing to be passed on a few generations. Each year I get a Christian calendar and, uh, but I never throw them out at the end of the year because it's you know, such beautiful scripture and, and pictures. You just go and buy a little cheap frame from Kmart and put the scripture in that. Sometimes if I um, don't know what to give a little for a friend that's going through a hard time, I can cut those out 
and uh, not only is it resourceful but it's um, sometimes a beautiful thing the scripture might be just speaking into that situation um, and the next one is uh, using media um, we uh, alluded to that a little bit more but more and more folks are on social media which can be a blessing and a curse I know and uh, but we often find a disconnect between the tangible world uh, the tangible uh, world and our online relationships and I know that's a real struggle particularly for young people but there are still bonuses to social media where we could take advantage and instead of allowing social media to be a distraction from prayer time make it a challenge make it a prayer time ch challenge pray for the first person when you when you uh, go on to it pray for the first person that pops up in your social media news feed um, and I have a couple of uh, messenger sites that talk with a few of the girls and uh, you can uh, someone's going through a hard time we can connect if there's a prayer need instantly we know what's going on and we can pray for that need so that can be a wonderful thing as well Daryl's been showing us how to use the YouVersion app. Have you all got that on your phones now? Yeah? Nod? Yes? Yes? Some? Yeah? YouVersion app. And I'm still navigating my way around that. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, not only can we find the notes, um, which I haven't put up because I'm not that savvy to that, not that savvy. I should have asked Daryl to show me how to do it. But... Um, with the YouVersion app, there is also a wealth of resources on that app. There's reading plans, there's study plans. Um, it, uh, you can put words in there. If, you, if you're wanting to find some uh, inspirational scripture or thoughts about a certain topic, um, you can put the word in and, uh, and it'll come up with some plans, some scriptures... They also have got emojis. Have you seen that on the YouVersion app? There's emo emojis, which are faces. So there's four on that YouVersion app. There's uh, a happy face, there's an angry face, there's a sad face, and there's an overwhelmed face. So if you're feeling angry, anyone feeling angry today? No one's going to admit it. I actually... Uh, put in angry I, put, I pressed the angry face to see what the app was going to tell me so but you know like it's good if you're just feeling that way you combat that with the scripture that that uh, the Lord's given us so John 16 verse 33 this is what the YouVersion app told me I have told you that this I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows but take heart because I have overcome the world so isn't that wonderful you can just put in how you're feeling if you're anxious if you're worried if you are fearful um, you can have scriptures immediately back you don't have to sort of thumb through your Bible sometimes you're trying to find the pages stick together I love this instant there it is in your face another uh, wonderful app which some of the girls have told me they've used here is called Abide. You can wake up to scripture, daily thoughts and prayer by the use of this app. And again, um, uh, it's a wonderful way of connecting with God. There's often in our frantic world, just having that music, the calming music in the background and uh, there's a little, uh, little speaker um, icon and... It, it, you can press that and it'll play um, a lot of scripture in the background. And you version as well, you press that little speaker. You don't even have to read it these days. You can actually press it at any time and the scripture will be reading through to you. It's wonderful. A few people are nodding here, so it's great. If you've got an Optus Fetch box at home, did you know that the Christian channels are free on that? You just got to go in and subscribe, and you can uh, you can uh, tick on those, and they're free. So sometimes there's some wonderful programs on that. So that's just another little thing I've discovered. 
So the next one is devotions, devotionals on email. And it's easy to find ourselves with the best intentions of doing devotions. But again, sometimes we turn it on and we get distracted by all sorts of um, emails and Facebook and all that. So if you like receiving devotions by email, another little tip is just create a separate account for your devotion so you don't have that distraction of, oh, wonder what this is going, what's happening here on Facebook or Instagram. So if you have a, a specific uh, account for your emails, it'll allow you to stop and focus on time with God. Peter and I have been using the devotion uh, daily bread nearly, well, all our married life. And we used to just see, receive that one little book every three months. But now we have it on our phones and on our, our um, iPads and on our computer. And it's just marvellous how we can access it anywhere. And also with that particular one and a lot of devotional um, thoughts, you can press uh, by, uh, the verse and you don't have to open your Bible. It'll go straight to another wonderful uh, app called Bible Gateway. And the whole scripture is there, there in front of you with all sorts of different versions as well. So that's great. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. And that's um, it's just so important that we anchor into um, the word of God. And the last one is uh, team up with somebody. Um, some people are still in their 3D groups connecting with each other growing in the Lord in that, and that's wonderful. I know a lot of people are still uh, in their, their groups here, KYB and their men's group, but connecting and just having that week to week. How are you going? What's happening? What's God saying to you in that moment? Um, but also it just helps us to stop from our busy lives. Take that time, connect with each other, pray with each other, and also challenge each other. It's just... Uh, it is vital for our survival. Get connected at church. I know there's, uh, sometimes it's easy to just come in late, leave early, but you're missing a lot if you do that. Connect with someone. Have got, talk about God's stories after church. It's crucial for your time with Jesus. We, we are not to do this life alone. We're to hang out together. We're to share our joys. We're to share our pain. We're to pray for each other. That's what it's all about, building each other up to walk this life. It's not easy walking the way the Lord wants us to do. And, uh, but if we have each other to do it together, to look out for each other, to have each other's backs, and, uh, and that's what, why it's so important to have our church community we are so fortunate to have so many resources. I know I've bombarded you with a lot of them today. Um, but by adding some of these ideas to your daily walk, even if there's one little thing today that might enhance your walk with him, I just hope and pray that you will just take that time to connect with him this week. Not only that, it might just be a conversation, conversational starter for some of your family or friends that don't know the Lord. And certainly, if you've got any other tips, let us know. Talk about it. Tell somebody. In fact, after church today, talk about your tips of connecting with God. No matter how wonderful or how stupid it might be, you know, you might think that that is just a silly thing, but if it works for you, often it'll work. For somebody else as well so talk about it share those thoughts I love learning from um, from pe the, a lot of you in the back row there I love listening to your God stories how you've got through life got through life with the help of the Lord and what has helped you and that really impacts my life so let's talk about it start conversations after church about that um, I thought I'd just finish today with a uh, a site it's called engage worship and I've only discovered this one recently and it's called pause I love the I love the uh, what they've called it pause and pray 
Now, some of you may or may not have gone to these sites and heard it, so I thought I'd like to share it with you. And uh, so we're going to just spend the next few moments in silence. We're going to listen to the uh, media. So just be comfortable. If you want to get on your knees, that's fine. Just find a comfortable spot. Close your eyes if you feel you'd like to. And just spending the next little while in reflection, then we'll have our closing song. So let's just listen to... Uh, to this pause pray thank you you're listening to pause pray from engage worship christian author Henri nuon wrote you must make the connection between prayer and life. The closer you are to the heart of God, the closer you come to the heart of the world, the closer you come to others. We're always called to action, but that action must not be driven, obsessive or guilt-ridden. Basically, it's action that comes out of knowing God's love. Let's take a moment to be reminded of the truth of God's love for us and to receive that love afresh. Ephesians 2 says, Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It's by grace that you have been saved. Ephesians 1 verse 4 says we are chosen in Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in God's sight. John 3 verse 1 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Fill me that I may go out and share it with the world.